This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. I have always been a fan of house snakes, keeping brown house snakes for probably the last 15 years. But I tell you what, I'm at Bushfelt Reptiles, my good friend Warren and Nicole, that helped me so much in South Africa, and they have house snakes that are blowing me away. Let's start with this Aurora house snake. I tell you what, I've never seen anything like it. I've seen them in books a couple times, but to be holding it just absolutely blows me away. That olive green color and that kind of orange stripe on it makes this an incredible animal. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of house snakes today. My name is Brian Bartrek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll be at Bushfeld Reptiles in Bella Bella, South Africa, looking at some amazing house snakes. You're watching Snake Bites. Back to the Aurora house snake. These guys are from the High Felt area, which is basically right around the Johannesburg area. Now, interestingly enough, they're from the same area as the Rankles cobras, which do eat snakes. So theoretically, the Rankles could potentially be eating Aurora house snakes. Now, the other thing about how they become more rare is exactly because they're from that High Felt area, which is around Johannesburg. And of course, with the continued growth of the urban areas, these guys' habitats are becoming less and less and you're not seeing them around much at all. As a matter of fact, Warren told me when he was a kid, he used to catch these all the time, and now you rarely see them, which is pretty cool. Now, as far as reproduction goes, these guys will have a few less eggs than the brown house snakes, but they're really pretty much the same care. A lot of these guys can be a little bit tricky when they're babies, but once they get switched over to pure rodents, they're little powerhouses. And I used to always think when I saw house snakes when I was a kid that they were little tiny pythons. As a matter of fact, there was a period of time that they were called brown house pythons. Even though they were never a boad whatsoever, but I've always loved the house snakes. I tell you what, every cage I open, I'm absolutely blown away. I always think of house snakes as kind of a brown animal, and yet every animal I'm looking at here is so gorgeous, just like this olive house snake, which is basically the same color as the Aurora house snake, but it doesn't have that orange stripe on them. Now, these guys are endemic to South Africa as well, and you can find them throughout the coastal regions. What's interesting is that they reclassified them from a Lamprophis to a Lacodonomorphis, which is actually a water snake rather than a house snake, which I find kind of interesting. The other thing about these that make them really cool is that they're really snake eaters oftentimes. I tell you what, these house snakes have opened up my eyes to the beauty of the animal. You know, it's kind of rare when I go to a collection and literally come across snakes I didn't even know existed, but certainly some of these house snakes are some of them, including this bug-eyed house snake. And obviously it's got its name because it has kind of a little more bulbous eyes, and they kind of look like they're a little bit more towards the top of the head, but it might be a little bit of an illusion. These guys are endemic to Namibia, and they stay a little bit smaller than the other house snakes, and they're typically a lizard eater rather than a rodent or other snake eater, but they're pretty cool. I just can't believe how cool those little eyes are. I shouldn't say little eyes. They're really big eyes for a little snake. Here's another African house snake, but this guy is from Tanzania. It's the Tanzanian striped house snake. Now the majority of house snakes will have this kind of line that goes through their eye and kind of runs to the back of their head. But with the striped Tanzanians, they actually go all the way down their body, which makes them really interesting. And again, not quite as big as the, the bug-eyed Namibian version, but they do have slightly larger eyes. And, and like most house snakes, there's some polymorphism. So I want to show you this other one right here that has tremendously defined stripes. Look at that all the way down its side, how defined that is compared to this animal where it kind of disappears maybe a third to halfway down its body. And again, most house snakes are sexually dimorphic, basically meaning that the males will stay a little bit smaller than the females. But I tell you what, this is a perfect example of polymorphism within one species. Okay guys, now I'm gonna really blow your mind and kind of confuse you. These happen to both be brown house snakes, which also happen to be the exact same species, but typically the Zambian animals come out a greenish color, whereas the Togo animals typically come out a more black color. So think about that, the exact same snake, that's pretty insane, that's a lot of polymorphism. Take a look at this absolutely gorgeous animal here. Now there's just so much red and rust color in it. It's actually a color phase from Northern KZN. And this red color is gonna really aid tremendously well when breeding into the albinos to produce red albinos. Wow, that's gonna be spectacular. 
So let's get into color mutations. You guys know that I love the paint jobs and the house snakes certainly are starting to get some pretty awesome color mutations for sure. Now this one happens to be a normal T negative albino, which is basically just the albino that we typically think of when we think lack of melanin. Now these snakes will typically breed several times a year in some cases. Now you gotta feed them a lot. I personally have had three clutches a year, but I've heard of up to five to six clutches a year. So these guys are definitely little egg production machines. So this is another type of albino, but this is what they call a T-positive albino, which just basically means that it still has tyrosine, which is a protein within melanin that makes it look a little more caramel or somewhat purpley looking. But it's pretty cool that there's both P-negatives and T-positives already in house snakes. Take a look at this little monkey here. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. This is a hypomelanistic animal, but what makes it really cool is look at the spotted pattern all the way throughout it. Now that's because it's from a locality from Natel, which those animals typically have a lot more pattern to them. But again, this is a hypomelanistic version, which means that it's lacking some of the melanin, but isn't an albino. And of course, it's a recessive mutation. And of course, now that I've showed you albinos and hypos, what's the next step, of course? And that would be sun glow, which is a hypo albino. Now that's a double recessive mutation, which means it takes a little bit of work because you basically have a 9331 ratio out of every 16 eggs. So only one out of every 16 babies has the potential to be a sun glow. But I tell you what, it looks really cool. You can definitely tell the difference between an albino and a sun glow just with that kind of translucent look to it. It definitely looks almost like it's always in shed, but this animal isn't in shed at all. Last but certainly not least is a snake that I absolutely fell in love with when I saw it several years ago. And to the best of my knowledge, the only ones in the entire world are right here in South Africa. And of course, it's the butter house snake. These little guys remind me of albino green Burmese pythons, but they're actually hybrids between a brown house snake, but the Zambia ones that are green like we showed you earlier, and the albino cape ones that are from South Africa. And I absolutely love these little monkeys. And speaking of love, if you don't love house snakes yet after this episode, I don't know what to tell you. Bush-filled reptiles are certainly pioneering the way for these beautiful house snakes. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to buy some of these animals off and get them into my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at SnakeBitesTV and on Instagram at SnakeBites.TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.